first thing I'm going to show you is how to create a flower garden. It doesn't have to be a flower garden. Depending on the colours you use, it, you could end up with a bush fire. But I'm scrunching up a piece of fabric. And it was that piece that was about an eighth of a metre. Fat eighth. Scrunching it up in the same way as we did for the air exclusion on the first DVD, only this time we haven't coloured it first. We've just scrunched it wet and we'll now add the colours. I'll just convince it to stay. So, I'll do the colours you see in front of me. Believe it or not, same colours on both those pieces of fabric, just different amounts of them and different weights of fabric. So you can put into your flower garden exactly what colours you want. I'll go for reds and magenta. And I'm not going to leave room for the colours to bleed on this piece because the action of the heat and the steam in the microwave doesn't give them time to bleed. So I'm meeting them up, but I'm not overlapping them. And I'll add a bit of orange, and I'll add a bit of green, and a bit of lime. Can't get anywhere without my lime until all of that fabric is completely covered with colour at the surface. With the colours complete, there's a lot of layers of fabric there and we don't want to lean on it and smudge those beautiful colours that we've applied. So this time I'm going to put a layer of plastic over the top of it. I've just used a plastic bag here. And I'm pressing that so I know the colours will penetrate to the lower layers. And if I've got excess on the surface there, chances are I do have excess in the um, fabric itself and we don't want to risk it so we can either use a piece of fabric or a piece of paper to blot up that excess and get a pretty nice result. Yes liquid radiance is suitable for working on fabrics and pa uh, papers as well as and cards as well as fabrics. Okay. Excess is gone. I'm now going to pop that into a microwave vessel. Lift it up carefully. You can use an egg lifter. You've got to remember that liquid radiance is non-toxic, so you can use things from your kitchen with all the things we're doing now. And it's time to cook. The timing. We started off with an eighth of a metre. We estimated our total cooking time to be two to two and a half minutes. So I'm going to start off cooking for one minute. My microwave is in on high. We need to remember that liquid radiance is totally non-toxic and non-polluting. We can use the same microwave for cooking our fabrics as we can for cooking our food. And equally important, the same microwave vessels for our fabrics as well as our food, Pyrex, or whatever you've got in the kitchen. I do have certain vessels that I like to use because the plastic vessels will get a bit stained and you can clean those off really, really easily. What we're going to expect to see now when this comes out in just about 10 seconds time is a change. It'll be the first changes that we look for and that is intensification. Well, we're waiting for that to finish. Let's just mop up what's on my board and have another and on the plastic and have another one of those yummy all day mop ups starting. Here we have some really hot fabric. 
and I'm sure you'll be able to see those colours are a whole lot more intense now than they were when we started. We're going to continue cooking. Half a minute this time. And by the end of that, we should start to see the separation happening. That is the lights and the darks happening in the colours. What we're really seeing there is a variation on the um, things we already know from the first DVD. We could have used our five finger foam brush and coloured that fabric and then scrunched it and then microwaved it. You just get a different patterning from what we have done now. And the difference between cooking it in the microwave and drying it naturally is also incredible. You can see same colours, just slightly different placement. Cooked in the microwave, just a few minutes, dried naturally, 24 hours. Okay, let's see what's going on in the oven. Okay, so yes, I can touch that. There's no colour coming off on my fingers significantly. But you can start to see parts of the separation happening in some of those colours. It's a bit tricky to see on this one. It's a lot clearer on some of the other folds and scrunches that we do. So, separation's happening. Back to the cooking. Let's go 20 seconds. Next time, we will start to see some of that drying around the edges. The drying you see will be dependent on the way the fabric has been scrunched or folded or twisted and there's a lot more about that in the handbook to help you. <coughs> Definitely some drying around the edges so from this point I'm going to be careful. And we continue because that still feels moist to me. Uh, let's go 15. Now I haven't really added these timings up, but I would say that in no time flat we'll be up to our two to two and a half minutes and I'll be able to say we're done. So now as I touch my completed fabric, it feels clammy. Time to open it up and see what we've achieved and although it's still quite damp we're going to let it dry naturally before we iron it dry and heat set it done for our last little microwave taste of things in this bonus session I'm going to show you how to do the spiral and we'll do the rainbow spiral because it really is a favorite we are definitely wetting the fabric for this one. Finding where we want the centre of our spiral to be, and I'm sure you'll remember this one from the one colour colouring on our first DVD program, only this time we are spiralling first because we're going to do multicolours. And twisting with one hand, combing with the other, your hands going in opposite directions. You don't want it too high, so that looks about right. I'll lean on it to flatten it down and we're ready to add our colours. For my rainbow colours, we'll start off with yellow on the middle of the spiral on the little knob that we've been hanging on to. And I'm going to take that colour in a rainbow arc from the centre to the outside, dab, dab, dabbing those colours on. Each subsequent colour then starts beside the last one. I need to get a bit fatter at the edge. Again, there are several layers to get through, so dab, dab, dab. Got plenty there. And I will continue going around with those colours through.
through the colours of my rainbow until I meet up again. Continuing that rainbow arc shape from the inside of the fabric to the outside. Magenta. Not leaving any gaps, it doesn't have time to bleed when we're cooking it in the microwave. Purple. Blue. Whoa, I was excited. Cyan will help cover it, that extra bit that shouldn't have been there. And green. There are many ways you can put the colour on for this one. You can put them on like pie wedges, you can put the colours on like spokes of a wheel, and whatever way you colour up will give you different patterns when you open the, the spiral up. So be prepared to play with this one a bit too. Okay now we need to know that that's gone right down to the base layers. Cover it, lean on it so we don't smudge our colours. More colour for our all day mop up and See what we can achieve with the blot ups from our spiral. A rather nice piece of paper. For those of you who are into paper crafts, liquid radiance is pH neutral, that is acid free, so it's perfectly safe to use it in your precious scrapbooking projects. Lotting up's done, a little bit of colour transfer there which I can just rub out with my finger and we're ready to cook. Half time and then half a minute after that because of the size of my fabric. Now those rules that we put on the board a little while ago apply up to a half a metre. There are different rules for larger pieces and you'll be amazed that you can fit up to three metres in a regular microwave oven. You'll find all those rules in the microwave handbook. Let's get cooking.